Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with 3D Printing Thursday. We are back with the glorious people with Anvil Industries today and we are going to be working on their new Patreon bundle, the Space Pirates. You could tell me nothing else about a bundle except for the name Space Pirates and I would be so on board. I will show you guys all the bits and pieces that come with Space Pirates a little bit later in this video. But in this video, I have just selected three of the awesome miniatures from this bundle. I'm going to print them out, get them ready for you guys, and get one of them painted up to show you the amazing detail. I've always wanted to run a Necromunda campaign based in the very bottom of the hive in the sump, uh, where there is basically an ocean. And there's pirates, and there's barges, and there's all sorts of like Mad Max on water, like water world, I suppose. Um, and I've always wanted to run a campaign like that. And these miniatures are something that I may delve into to construct my gang and use them in Necromunda. At least, that's my thoughts. Um, I've also been sent two new machines by the glorious people at Uniformation, and they have sent me their wash station and their cure station for the GK2. So I'm going to try those out in today's video as well and see what I think of them. They are quite well-made machines. They seem to do exactly what they say on the tin. But like I said, nothing really matters until you actually test them yourself. So I was going to show that off in today's video and see if they are worth the hassle. All right, guys, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully you will enjoy me building and painting a space pirate. Okay, guys, so I have 3D printed off, like I said, the three miniatures that I want to construct from the Anvil Industries uh, Space Pirates bundle. I have produced the Bosun which is a fully complete character. I do like the idea of doing this. I love the idea that Anvil Industries gives you legs, torsos, heads, all the other bits and pieces needed to create a whole variety of different characters based on your needs, which like I said, if I'm gonna be using them in a Necromunda campaign, that's incredibly useful. But I do like the addition of extra characters. They did a lot with the, the bank heist game and stuff like that, which I really liked. Um, and the bosun is one of them. He is a one complete drop character. Then they've obviously given you the captain who is the majority built, but his hands are optional. So they've given you options for his hands, which I have added to uh, the, the print bed and gotten them ready. And then this is one of the kind of multi-part selections of miniatures. So it's a set of legs, a torso, two arms and a pair of pistols. Um, so that's a full complete like modular character so I could choose whichever head I want, whichever legs I want, whichever arms I want um, and these are all usually quite interchangeable with previous months um, setups so that works really well so I'm really happy with that. Now as goes the GK2 printer obviously this is the print bed from the GK2 and I like a system that mitigates me having to touch or interact with the resin as much as possible as you can see the hand that's holding the, the uh, print bed even though this piece has never, never touched any resin I'm still wearing a glove. Now most printers and most setups you have to scrape the miniatures off the print bed from here and then transfer them to something to wash them. I always dislike that as a system. I've always preferred people who manage to incorporate this so I can turn this entire thing upside down and it fits into the top of the wash station. So then all I need to do is hit start. That's it. All the miniatures are being washed off the print bed. I also love the concept that the print bed itself is getting a little wash on the excess material or any dried up old bits of resin is getting cleaned off that too before I get ready for the next print. I think it's a really nice thing, so kudos for that. It would be nice if I could close this while I'm doing it though. But that's about all I get. Okay, so now that the parts have been thoroughly washed, I can transfer them to, once again, a uh, tray and get those parts scraped off. Okay guys, I now have my three miniatures cleaned up and glued to their bases. Um, the bosun, the captain with his uh, cutlass and his pistol and um, just a standard deck hand. Now, unfortunately, I still forgot to add his uh, close combat weapon to the print bed. So he's currently missing his left hand, so. He won't be getting painted today. I'll have to print out another part for him, but I'm a little bit time sensitive today. So I don't have time to do that right now. I wasn't particularly planning on painting that particular model now. I want to either paint the bosun or the captain, but we shall see when they're all sprayed up and I can see all their details properly, which one I gravitate towards more. So the last thing we have to do is of course, get them cured up. So we're gonna throw them onto the uh, cure station from Uniformation as well. See how this thing performs. It opens from the top, which is a bit unusual for, um, things usually they open from the front but uh it doesn't seem to hinder it too much and then we shall of course hit 
go. And now uh, this thing, I've got about three minutes to go until we have our perfectly cured miniatures ready to be sprayed and ready to get stuck in with the painting side of things. So I'm excited to do that. I hope you guys are as well. And of course, we have our three lovely models in the curing station getting nice and uh, cured, ready to be sprayed and then painted. It was quite a hard decision as to decide which one to paint. Obviously, the one that was missing his hand was out of the race. But the bosun miniature, this guy here, I think he looks fantastic. I kind of wish I'd put him on a square base. I could have used him as an Empire Engineer in my old world army and I think it would make a pretty stellar empire engineer at that so perhaps I need to print off another one or cut him off this circular base uh, the captain in the end went out for me he's just such a heroic dashing figure real traditional and then I went through the kind of mind process of how I wanted to paint him that I want to go real regal and lots of like purples and blues or um, what, are, what, what did I want to do with this miniature I always like trying to think of things to use the miniatures for um, obviously, if I'm planning to make uh, a warband for a miniature agnostic game or something like that, I'll put a little bit more thought in before the process of making the, if, if the miniature, if that makes sense, as opposed to producing a miniature and then trying to fit it in. So it, it kind of doesn't work that way. So I'm really happy to have all these files and access to all these files so that in the future, when I do need to make a warband for a miniature agnostic game, I can go through all the different parts and make the one I want. So the ones that I'm painting in these videos tend to get left behind and that sometimes upsets me a little bit. I definitely want to have a use for them. And I decided that I hadn't really painted a Cadian in a while and I love the Cadian scheme. So I thought of him as being this kind of dashing, like frigate captain um, of the like Acadian defense flotilla. So not someone that like leads a grand ship or a grand cruiser or anything like that. No, no one so like uptight, but more like I said, the dashing hero who tries to outdo all of his uh, kind of similarly ranked um, uh, officers. Um, so I decided to go with that. So I went for the traditional green and the tan flak. Um, and honestly, it wasn't until a little bit later in the video that uh, his face started to draw my attention. And I was like, wait a minute. Did they? No. Did they sculpt? Nah. And then the further I got into painting this guy, the more I realized I think they did sculpt that guy. <laughs> so he... I, I was really tempted to just say it in the thumbnail because I think it would make more people watch the video if I had just said, you know, adding X to the Warhammer 40k universe. And I think that would have been a really funny way of doing it. But aside, the surprise is a little bit more funny. Um, so as this video goes on, please do try and pay attention to his face and see if he, you uh, recognize this character. Does he remind you of anyone? My guess is it will remind people in a certain age bracket. <laughs> like if you're like 18 or younger, you'll have no idea who this character is. I think if you're 25, 35, 45, you'll definitely know who this guy is. At least I hope you do. At least I'm getting older than I think I am. Um, but it definitely factors into the whole dashing hero look um, that I think he has. Like I said, I'm Vlinch. She's been supporting this channel for quite a number of months now. I have had the pleasure of painting their models uh, time and time again. Um, and I've always enjoyed the process. Um, it's actually quite an interesting experience because other games, like when I do a video for like tra Dragon Trappers, for instance, it's a specific miniature. I just go into the files and I go that one and I print it and I get an awesome print. With these guys, I click in and I'm like, oh, what legs do I want? Then what torso do I want? What arms do I want? What pose do I want? What weapons is he going to have? What head am I going to give him? Am I getting him a backpack or a banner? Or a... And it just becomes this entire thing. It usually takes me like an hour, an hour and a half going through all the different parts, trying to decide what I want the guy to look like. And... It's actually a really enjoyable feature of these guys is the, you know, I could give this set of files to five guys and we could all go away and I say, make a warband. And we would all come back a few days later with different warbands and they would look nothing alike. Everyone would have different models and different poses. Um, and I think for a miniature agnostic game, that's super helpful, especially since it seems how everything's attached to the wrist. So you can have as dashing a hero as you want, and then depending on which character you go for, you can put on different equipment. This is the full bundle for Space Pirates. Here is the dashing hero. You're supposed to have a hook, but I decided to give him a pistol. Uh, and there is a couple of other like, kind of like pre-made characters like this lady here, um, the, the bosun. There's another bosun. Um, and like I said, their hands are still separate, so you can choose to do what you want with characters like this. This is the one that I think would look kind of cool as an Empire Engineer. Uh, the lookout is really awesome as well to be kind of gnarly mutated face um, and then obviously when it comes to the standard troops you do just get access to different arms different weapons if there's a parrot in there the guys holding rum bottles and you know drink and accordions and here's the full set of dudes i think they're fantastic now one of the things that ambulance is now doing 
they started it last month which is that each month they also add a small bundle of extra stuff to a company last month's bundle so the first time they did it was with the martian style spacesuit guys and then a month later because i was very curious they told me they were going to do this add in a little bit more and i was like what are they going to add is it just going to be like a couple more heads or a few different weapons or like what's the big deal but the martian ones suddenly had this awesome miniature holding a banner he had another one with like jump pack options and then you had loads of other pieces of equipment which i think is cool last month they gave us the dune stand-in miniatures and because dune is such a, a hot commodity right now i just watched dune 2 myself the other night it was colossally good um and then once again this month they added in a bunch of new torsos guys with swords on their backs and loads of close combat weapons and loads of different it's just awesome it's a really cool and like an innovative way for a company to uh, keep you encouraged to stay subscribed to them month to month to month if you really like space pirates for instance like i do definitely a bunch of models in there i'm already not only super excited to see what bundle they bring out next month but i'm also super excited to know what extra bits they're going to give us for space pirates next month i'm hoping it's a giant space galley galleon a galley would be a, a, a kitchen. I don't want a space kitchen. <laughs> oh, do I? No, oh, it might be interesting. No, no. I want a space spaceship. And I don't mean like a spaceship with rocket packs. I want like masts and giant space sails and a big space anchor. You know what I mean? Like I said, I think the Cadian colors do really work for a character like this. And um, I could use him easily as a castellan in my Cadian army now. He's on the right size base. He's the right scale. He's wielding a power sword and an anti-glass pistol and um, i think he would work a treat and um, i'm wondering has anybody copped on to the the head just yet with the uh, the design i'm gonna pay a little bit of special attention to his face to make sure that i do emphasize um those details make sure it looks really good so i'm gonna start with Cadian. And I'm going to highlight his face now this new thing that i've been doing is I, I am struggling with painting faces the last while I have realized that I don't think contrast paints are amazing base coats for skin. Um, they are if you're going to leave it like that, but if you want to add any warmth to the skin, I, like I feel like all the contrasts are too cold and I never quite get what I wanted. So after the contrast and after I've done the first highlight, I tend to get Karienberg Crimson Shade and that's what I'm applying here. And I apply that over the skin in a nice thin coat. Once again, it adds that rosiness and that warmth into all the recesses and shadows and the eyelids and all that kind of stuff. And then I jump up to my palest highlight and just go for, you know, like I said, tips and nose and cheeks and foreheads and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think it looks much more natural. Um, if any of you else are having that same issue, that contrast skin tones are just not really doing it for you. I'm going to have to play around with the Army Painter once again, the Speed Paints, and see if their skin tones are any better. I may just completely convert over to those if there is, or any of the dipping inks from Green Stuff World. I need those free flowing ones. I need a new one for, for that. And as you can see, I'm being careful and re-highlighting all that with the final bit. I'm not applying a lot. This is, like I said, this is the final highlight, just a little bit. A little bit of red for the brocade thingies or whatever you call them, those tassely ropes that um, military guys like to carry on them. I know they're, I think they're called brocades when they're like around their arm and up over their shoulder, what they are over the back of a cape. I guess it's just made up. I have no idea. Um, but here he is finished. Here's a close-up on the face. Does he remind you of anything? I'm dying to say it, but I don't want to ruin it for you guys. Please do let me know if you figure out who he is. I am very curious. I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you will check out Anvil Industries using the link down in the description and see if they have any awesome bundles that interest you. And there we have it guys, a space pirate captain from Anvil Industries monthly Patreon is now complete and painted. Having said that, about halfway through painting this miniature, he did not look like a space pirate to me anymore. He started to look like a specific character from an old movie, very famous old movie, um, and that's all I could see after that. This did in no way detract from my love of the miniature that I was painting. It may have in, in fact increased my love of this miniature. If you guys can figure out what miniature I think this guy looks like, please put it in the comments below, but don't spoil it for anybody else. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give the video a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more daily updates. 
Thank you so much for Anvil Industries for supporting the channel and sponsoring today's video. And thank you so much Uniformation for sending me out a new wash and cure station for the GK2. I have the complete set now, so you will see more videos about 3D printing with that setup in the very near future. Thank you guys so much for sticking around at the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.